badge number, please? I'm sorry. 2403. 2403. Officer Swenson, badge number. I'm sorry. 2700. 1770. 1770. This is Susan Bassey, and for the next year, every video that I post will be with the intention of working towards getting cameras in our courtrooms. We ask for the names of sheriff's deputies, police officers, and we also ask for their badge numbers because we read their police reports and the transcripts of their testimony in court. We like to see the names and the faces behind those reports, but more importantly, we like to see the attitudes of these officers when they're out on the street and if they're more worried about pronouns and titles than about the law and doing their job. Mr. Hoover, my name is Susan Bassey and I'd like to ask you some questions about a racketeering investigation involving women SV. I've spoken with a number of people who have consulted with you and who have also talked about what Ruth Patrick and Women SV, a nonprofit where you sit on the board and where you literally have been getting referral business to the tunes of millions of dollars. Do you have a comment about that? absolutely amazing to me that they have this many police officers. The police officers are probably one for every two protesters. There have been protests all over the country over different issues and there has never been this ratio of police officers for this kind of protest. This makes everyone question why the police outside our house would be this concerned that we would, oh, more. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Officer Ray and another one in the back. We've got 10 or 11 police officers and there's probably 30 protesters. But what they are protesting, they do not want the public to hear. Mainstream media is blacklisting it. 200. Officer Alvarez. Badge number, please. I'm sorry. 2403. 2403. Officer Swenson, badge number. I'm sorry. 2700? 1770. 1770. Officer Delara. Badge number, please. 2438. 2438. Thank you, Officer Delara. Hello, Officer. I don't think I got your name and badge number. I'm it's, collecting. Uh, Deputy Real. R. I E H L badge number? It's gonna be 2406. 2406, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I, I said it wrong. I, let's practice my L's again. Ready? Officer Jaramillo? Really close. Okay. Jaramillo? Jaramillo. Badge 2434. 2434. We're not going to remember everybody's name. We're probably not going to even know how to pronounce their names correctly or what pronouns we're supposed to use when we're talking to them. But we are going to remember their story and we're going to remember the patterns of what took place because all of these police officers are witnesses. Uh, by the way, don't go, you guys don't forget you have a criminal case against me. I'm being prosecuted so all your body cams are now exculpatory evidence. You got to make sure Jeff Rosen gets that so that they can all see it. Uh, we're going to pull them down now. Officer, can I get your name, please, and your badge number? Uh, excuse me, are you refusing to identify? So are you talking to me now? Yes, I am. My name is right here. My badge number is 1686. Officer Owens, badge number 1686. Thank you, sir. They're going to pull them down now, Officer Ray. They're going to take them down. That seems like a, a lot of use of public resources for some protesters that are just upset about their kids, don't you think? We're also going to remember the stories of the people who are complaining and what they're complaining about. Because when these people are complaining about what lawyers and judges are doing to them in courts, what CPS and foster care are doing, we're going to pay attention and we're going to look for the patterns. No justice, no peace, no more,
And this is how we show you how we follow the money when you're investigating the courts and law enforcement. Every one of those police officers makes at least $200,000 a year. Some make as much as $400,000 a year. And the fact that the judges, who are supposed to be public servants, sent those police officers out to control the message and the narrative and to act as if those parents were threats is telling. And that's what we need to look at because it probably has a lot to do with the secret Bar Bench Media Police Committee that we found in 2022, where judges, lawyers, and police officers were meeting with reporters from the San Jose Mercury and deciding what information the public would get and what information they wouldn't. And they never decided to publish information about family court. You guys can understand when people are talking about defunding the police that they might see this as a waste of public resources, right? These people are protesting courts taking their children. They do not have weapons. They are not dangerous. They do, maybe they have misdemeanor criminal history because it was conjured up in family court, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sheriff's deputies, all of you probably making over $200,000 a year. And your supervisor, Sergeant Ray, back there on the phone again with all, oh, here we go, another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven police officers, one sergeant in the back on the phone. Last time he said he wasn't on the phone with Patricia Lucas, so I wonder who he's on the phone with now. That's a big waste of public resources out there, Sergeant Ray. What, who made a threat assessment that those protesters were such a threat to justify nine police officers? Who would make that call? Would that be you or would that be Sheriff Smith? Or would that be a judge inside the courthouse? 